Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Espresso Jams. Today, I have with us Jules Vitality. And let me know if I got that right, Jules. Uh, Jules Vitality is a podcaster. She is a host and also a guest. And she does wonderful things for her clients. Welcome to the show, Jules. Thank you so much, Joe. Super happy to be with you on your podcast. I'm glad to have you here. Where are you dialing in from today? I am an expat in Mexico. I lived most of my adult life in Canada, but I was born in Ukraine. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, this I didn't know. You're listening to Espresso Jam. Short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, technology, and entrepreneurship. If you're just starting out on your business adventure or you're a seasoned business professional, I'm sure you'll find value in these short conversations. Espresso Jams is brought to you by Apexable, providing the tools, insights, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. Interesting. There you go. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very good. And how long have you been in Mexico? Almost two years. Wow. Okay. How, and I've heard great things about Mexico. Absolutely wonderful. I think not only do you get the benefit of the exchange rates and a beautiful climate mm. and a four season tropical living, um, but also a lot of health benefits of being close to the sea or the Pacific Ocean in this case. And Overall, a lot less pollution, especially where I am. You know, I know Mexico City, Guadalajara have probably as much pollution as most North American cities. But sure. coastal living is definitely very much beneficial for health, well-being, and for myself, also mental well-being. Yes, I love the ocean and the water, the seas. Yeah, beautiful. Great. So tell us a little bit about what you, what you, what were you doing before you became a, an independent business owner? Yeah, so I, I was a little bit of a serial side, side hustle entrepreneur <laughs> for a pretty lengthy amount of time. But in my corporate career, I started as a full-timer, nine to five, obviously, as most of us do, because that's what my parents taught me to do. That was the expectation set by society and what most normal people or normal parents tell their kids that they should pursue. So I went to school and I started my career. And then shortly into it, I realized I was getting bored really, really quickly with each job and I wanted to change jobs. And I wanted to move into different projects and learn new skills. And people would look at me and they'd be like, well, why aren't you happy with just being there and, you know, being, you know, proficient in what you do and just show off your, your skills? And I'm like, well, that's when I get bored. As soon as I learn something and master it, I kind of want to move on to something else. So I started doing more consulting, started doing more project work, switching from one role to the next. I actually left my corporate career for a while to become a hairstylist because that was my childhood dream. So I did um, cosmetology in here for, I don't know, under two years. And even though it was an extremely low pay, horrible amount of money, I loved waking up every morning and driving 45 minutes to my work and spending time with women, chatting, and just having a time in my life. So that was a little four glimpse into, okay, Work can be enjoyable. You can do what you want to do, but you've got to find something that would actually generate more income. Yes. <laughs> yes. So even though I had to return back to my office job, I that thought never really left me that there is more out there. And there is there is a way to to want to wake up every day and want to do what you're called to do. But I didn't know what it was. And around the pandemic time. I entered this period of confusion for various reasons. And even though I was still in my job, I knew that was not what I was meant to do. So after a lot of soul searching, uh, conversations with coaches telling me to embrace the confusion, that out of the confusion, something brilliant is going to come out. When I embraced it, when I stopped fighting it, it did. 
And one of the things that I was doing at the time was trying to heal from the trauma that I was facing, multiple traumas. And one of the ways that I did that was look for the answers online. So I would Google things. I would YouTube things. And these podcasts and YouTube shows would pop up and I would listen to those episodes and they were helping me so much. They literally would give me a different perspective that I never thought of. I'd be like, wow, why have I not thought about it this way? Mm. So it opened my mind to a completely different way of life. I started learning a bit more about love attraction, about taking accountability for our own thinking and how I could have been actually a culprit in the traumas and misfortunes that happened to me in my life by constantly fearing certain things. And then they eventually did happen. So I really, really appreciated that time in my life where podcasters and show hosts, without knowing it, changed my life in a more impactful way than possibly the therapists that I was seeing. Wow. I, I love the, the phrase you said, taking accountability for our own thoughts. Yes. I, I had to learn to intercept my negative thinking. Yes. That was a big, big change. Uh, I took some mini courses, then longer courses. Little by little, I started following those folks that uh, spoke to me or spoke my language, so to speak. Well, actually, it was a completely different language, but little by little, I was starting to speak that language too. Did you feel pulled in that direction or pushed in that direction? Exactly. I was pulled in that direction. That was my choice. I searched for that information mm -hmm. and I chose to listen to that information, absorb it and make it a part of my life. That is why, long story short, this is now what I do. I wanted to basically join the ranks of those people who are positively impacting other people people that are going through some challenges, whether it's emotional, mental relationships, business. Right now, I concentrate more on business, but mindset is a huge piece of what I do. I help bring experts to my show that illuminate various aspects of life or mindset of positive thinking and hopefully impacting the audience or at least one person behind the screen who is going to go, wow, light bulb moment, just like I did. Yeah. So that is my mission. And that's what gets me out of bed every morning. I remember when I was sick with COVID. I still wanted to get up, listen to those podcasters and do more of what I do right now. And that's how I knew this is the right thing. Because when you have COVID, you don't want to move a <laughs> finger. And when you're still thinking about something, ah, that's probably your mission. <laughs> yes. Well, I, when you're sick, yes. you know. Yes, and, and I've seen a lot of what you have out there with your podcast and your videos and YouTubes and your magazine, and the passion that you have comes through brilliantly. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. It, it's really nice. I can tell you're working in your zone of genius. Thank you. And speaking of that, I, I, for the longest time, I didn't really think there was any correlation with what I previously used to do. And recently, you know, getting getting validation and, and compliments from my my guests saying oh you're a great interviewer and I'm like hmm, oh, how is it that I'm a great interviewer and then I realized I've been interviewing people for 20 plus years in my professional career because I used to be a business analyst and my job was actually to interview people subject matter experts and distill the information and document it in the most concise mm -hmm. way and relay it to a different audience either to the stakeholders like management who didn't speak the language of the subject matter experts or to the technical team, again, who didn't necessarily understand the business, but who needed specific chunks of information easy enough that they could actually develop systems around them. So I guess in a way I do have a lot of practice and experience in that area. And now I'm simply applying it to something I'm passionate about. I see a lot of crossover between that and what you do. And I imagine when you talk with your clients, that analytical side of you is so helpful because you're looking for answers. Um, I get that impression. I got that impression with your story about how you listen to podcasts and listen to YouTubes that your, your listening skills are, are very attuned to what's going on in your life right now. Would you like to get in front of more of your ideal clients and at the same time, build your brand and create evergreen content? 
Well, you can do that with podcast guesting. This very moment, you're listening to a podcast that may have been published today or three weeks ago or three years ago. In a very real sense, you're engaging with the speakers, hopefully enjoying yourself and learning something new at the same time. And you're getting to know the guest and how they help their clients, their customers, and the problems that they solve. You may even be their ideal client and want to learn more about them and download one of their free resources you can find in the show notes or maybe even become a client of theirs. See, when you're a guest on a podcast, you will enjoy that same kind of engagement. It is perhaps the easiest, most cost-effective way to get in front of new audiences. Learn how you can be a guest on the right podcast and engage with your ideal clients with the free resources available at gapologist.com. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And I try to also always keep in mind the end listener or the person who's watching and what are they going through? What, how would they benefit from an episode that I'm recording? So it's not just about showcasing these brilliant individuals and coaches and experts and authors. It's also about give me some strategies and tips right now so our audience can apply it right now. Don't just tell me, go read my book. Don't just tell me, hey, I have a course. Give me some tips so we can share that with them right now so that they can walk away from this episode and have an actionable piece of advice and improve their life right you know, this minute or this week or this month. Implement those tips, especially if it's a mindset trick. Mm. Those things I find are, are so immediately implementable. Like, like in our previous recording, you talked about fear, for example. You know, fear is one of those things that holds a lot of people back. And I personally could listen to encouraging content about fear all day long because we always have something left behind. Yes. We're never going to be fearless 100%. Right. And I used to have what I called a positive input program. And it was very simple. In, in the days, I used to listen to cassettes. Remember cassettes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't have yeah, CDs yeah. <laughs> yet. We had cassettes and we had books. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to cassettes. I would listen to or read books. And it was part of my positive input program because I felt like I had to be intentional about feeding in the positive because there's, there's a lot of negative out there. And if we focus on that, we become ourselves negative. But there's a lot of good out there. There's so much good out there that we can focus on. And it goes back to taking responsibility and accountability, like you said, for our thoughts. We can, we can direct our thoughts if there's nothing else that we can do. And Viktor Frankl talks about this in his book about taking responsibility. He was in, a, he was in um, one of the camps many, many years ago, and he talked about how he survived by taking accountability for his thoughts. He could... He could direct his thoughts, no matter what horrors he saw. Viktor Frankl could direct his own thoughts. Yeah, I love that. And um, so positive input, awesome. I love that. I sort of call like the bigger um, pattern as a information diet. Okay, right? yes. We choose what we consume, whether it is nutrition or information. So we can say no to negative things. For example, I literally don't watch the news at all. Mm -hmm. People who do, let me know if something happened in Ukraine, in Canada, even in Mexico, COVID, it's all the same thing. Actually, I noticed that in the beginning of the pandemic, because you want to be informed, I was watching the updates about COVID and I was getting so depressed. Mm. And one day I'm like, no, enough is enough. It's the same. Every day it's exactly the same story. So many people die, da, da, da. be scared, have fear, mm. right? It's instilling that fear. And, and I said, no, I, I'm done with that. And I started actually intentionally creating an information consumption schedule where first thing in the morning, last thing before bed, I listen to something that reprograms my subconsciousness, whether it's hypnosis, whether it's uh, subliminal or just affirmations, whatever it is, I start my day and I end my day on a positive note that affects my mind. Even if I'm not fully paying attention to it, it's somehow getting in, right? The same throughout the day. 
if you have time driving or cleaning or even eating, I try to put on something positive. Same with music. I notice if I listen to music that is negatively charged, that is eventually going to affect my mood and it's going to affect my performance and sometimes even digestion because what we consume in the audible format or in the visual format can affect our physique as well. Yes. So that's my tip to share. Yeah, it has a physical effect. So let's let's think back now because I'm I'm a believer that you if you have faced challenges in your life and you've gotten through them, it's very possible that out of 7 billion people in the world there are folks going through today what you have gone through two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. What would you suggest to someone who's going through what you had gone through and, and how can they get through that? What would be one or two tips for them? Okay, and that's a great question. And let me just think of something that's going to apply to a lot of people regardless of what they're going through. So. First tip would be the emotion you're experiencing in the moment. So the negative emotion that comes up, whether it's disappointment or betrayal or sadness, depression, anger, whatever it is, embrace it. It's counterintuitive. Open your arms to the universe. Look up to the sky or close your eyes, whatever, whatever rocks your boat and feel it, really feel it, allow it. Because the longer you resist it, Whatever you resist persists. So embrace the emotion. You are a human being. You are given a gift of experiencing an emotion of a human being. So soak it in, experiencing it will actually release it. And then you will have a calmer mind to logically evaluate the situation. And sometimes that doesn't mean you will have a solution. Sometimes it will mean you will have a peace of mind. And remember this and repeat it to yourself until you believe it. The universe works in my favor. Hmm. Repeat it all day long. Because you know what? A week, a month, a year down the road, you're going to look back and you're going to go, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yes. Sometimes we don't know because we're too close to a situation or there's, there's all the turmoil going on right now when you were frustrated in your job because you wanted to learn more and you wanted to do things that was a rough time i'm sure but that propelled you into doing what you're doing now and propelled you into learning more about the human experience yes and i i had a lot of trauma in my life i don't want to get into that and at the moment it was so hard for me to think on my feet. But if I knew these two tips alone, I would be able to get through it better. And another another thing to remember also is that you have already overcome a lot of things. And think about all your previous experiences that didn't seem positive at the time. The fact that you've already overcome a, a heartbreak, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening had a heartbreak in their life. It prepared you to overcome the next one. And doesn't mean there will be one. But there's no need to be scared of that because if it does happen, you'll overcome it. You're going to overcome being fired. You're going to overcome a car accident. Whatever whatever happens, you are going to survive. You are going to be okay. You're going to learn from it. You're going to be a better human being. You're going to be able to help others. So look at every challenge as an opportunity to learn, grow, take that experience, and help others who are yet to go through it. That's your gift now to share with the world. Yes, absolutely. And always look for the silver lining. That's it. Jules, if someone wants to know more about you and get in touch and and learn more about your podcast, your magazine, and and all these things, these great things you have going, how can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. I welcome everybody to visit positiveimpact.tv. We have a YouTube channel with the same name, Positive Impact TV. That's also my hashtag on Instagram. So I would love to see you guys share your story on my show, magazine, and podcast. I love featuring individuals with an incredible story, those who are transforming the lives of others. So do get in touch and uh, let's work together. Yeah, super. And I would encourage everyone to get in touch with Jules and look at her magazines and and her YouTube channel and everything else you can find at positiveimpact.tv. Thank you, Joe.
Jules, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for sharing yourself with, with myself and, and my guests. My pleasure, Joe. Good day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Thank you for listening to Espresso Jams. If you like what you heard, please subscribe on your preferred channel. Never miss another episode. If you'd like more business tips on technology, entrepreneurship, and doing better, you can find me on LinkedIn at Joe Matz, that's J-O-E-M-A-T-Z, or go to my website, apexable.com, that's apex-able.com. I'm your host, Joe Matz, wishing you an awesome day.